So direct PFCL silicon oil exchange technique has uh, advantage over indirect exchange going through air that it decreases the risk of retinal slippage. That's important when you're dealing with giant retinal tears or a, a retinectomy. The problem is the active injection of silicon oil is more efficient than the passive aspiration of PFCL. Therefore pressure rises inside the eye and that can cause problems up to even rupture globe. Uh, if the surgeon is not wary enough and hence the technique is not practiced by many surgeons for that reason. With this in mind I would like to demonstrate two technique modifications that we use to help uh, avoid this problem. This is the first case of uh, 25 gauge uh, vitrectomy for a giant retinal tear with PVR. We stained with blue dye but we didn't see any significant ERM to peel. Again, probably immature membranes anteriorly, not much to peel, so we decided because the retina shortened to go ahead and do a, a, a retinectomy. Here's the retinectomy using the shave mode of the vitreous uh, cutter. With removal of the anterior flap, now PFCL is injected, laser under PFCL, attention to the horns. Uh, which is very important. Now the 23-25 direct PFCL exchange, we exchange one port of the aspiration to 23 and that gives an advantage of about one and a half times increased flow for the PFCL removal to avoid that problem. And if you look here, the color of the nerve uh, remains good during the procedure. If you change from 25 to 20, you have two times increased outflow of PFCL from 25 to 23, one and a half times increased outflow of PFCL. And the case was completed and of course with oil it's best to suture all pores, which is what we do. And this is the appearance post-operative about two weeks after the surgery. Now we'll go to the second technique. We start in any silicon oil exchange by priming the infusion cannula with silicon oil then putting back in the eye. The photograph insert shows the rest of the setup with the active extrusion and the light pipe inserted through the superior trochers. The diagram shows the vitreous cavity flows at the beginning of the exchange. It's important to first aspirate the BSS layer on top of the PFCL before moving to aspirate the perforocolumen liquid as shown in the diagram. After removing the BSS layer, PFCL is aspirated as the silicon oil is injected in the eye as shown here, mainly at the edge of the retinal tear. When this is achieved and the edges of the retinal tears are stuck down flat on the choroid, one follows the meniscus backward over the optic nerve to remove the rest of the uh, perforocarbon liquid as shown here. Here we show the machine parameters alongside with the surgery as the injection maximum is reached, which is 30 in this case. Further pressing the pedal down will result in maintaining the maximum injection as well as linear activation of aspiration uh, of the perforocarbon liquid.